Hello, amigos. I keep thinking I'm going to post more videos and things keep coming up, so I'm not posting them that often. I'm still hoping to post more, more often. Lately, I've been thinking about straight and squiggly lines, how you don't often see straight lines in nature, yet civilization is full of straight lines. And I see a relationship between straight lines and money, the prevalence of straight lines and money. We think of the straight line as the most efficient line there is. In the 3rd century BCE, Archimedes said the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And we figure the shortest distance is the most efficient. But if so, if the whole basis of natural selection is to select for the fittest, the most efficient, why is it that natural selection most often selects against the straight line for the curvy line, the meandering line. Just go out into a field if you can break yourself away from these gadgets and look around. How many straight lines do you see? And yes, there are straight lines in the natural world outside of civilization, but even they aren't actually straight. Even light travels in wave motion. In fact, there's really no such thing as a straight line, but the straight line seems to be our goal in civilization as we know it. Now, you do find relatively straight lines in nature, and they're the exception, not the rule. For example, somebody brought up, well, what about, say, spider webs? What about some trees like ponderosa pines and aspen trees? They grow relatively straight up. But you'll notice nature will allow for the straight line when the straight line is not imposing on other creatures. You'll notice when aspens are around other trees or around each other or ponderosas, they have regard for their neighbors. They start meandering. But when there's no obstruction, when they're free to grow in a straight line, then they do. They grow up in a relatively straight line, which still isn't a straight line. But then you'll notice the roots below the ground, which have to make way and have to be aware of their surroundings, are gnarly and curly. Basically, this is what all the structures in nature do, including crystals. Crystals will grow in relatively straight lines when their environment permits it, when the straight line is not imposing itself upon its surrounding neighbors, when it is free of obstruction. Crystals are an exception rather than a rule. That's why we consider gems rare. And someone else brought up the metals have a straight line lattice, crystal lattice. Then I thought about metallic substances being such a rarity in their pure form in nature. And the metallic substances are usually in compound forms in the natural environment, so we don't even see them. And they happen to be a basis of civilization as we know it. We extract metal and make it a rule rather than the exception, pure metal and crystalline forms and straight lines in nature outside of the walls of civilization are the exception rather than the rule, just the opposite. So we think, well, a straight line is the most efficient. That's why we have it in civilization. We want to get there fast. We travel the most direct route. But why is it that creatures in the wild travel on meandering paths? Why is it that light itself travels in a wave motion? Why is it that everything, the sound coming out of my mouth, travels in a wave motion? The very fact that we see colors and hear tones of sound and music, that is all the product of meandering lines of a wave motion. Straight and monotonous sound and light are irritating to our eyes and our psyche. Yet, we believe that this is the most efficient. But if straight lines are the most efficient, then why is it, wherever we find these massive grids and prevalence of straight lines, we find massive waste? I mean, waste so massive it's overwhelming. Just look around at the waste. And 
also the environmental destruction that comes around straight lines. And why is this? Basically, the idea of the straight line is a goal-oriented mind. And the idea of money is goal orientation. You're working for a future reward, not the present reward. The idea of a meandering line is the reward in the doing, in the present. You are aware of your surroundings. You take the scenic route, which is the meandering path. If you just want to get there, you take the straight highway, completely oblivious to your surroundings. It's about getting there fast. Basically, this is what money mentality does. You're working for a future reward. The reward is not in doing. The straight line represents the end justifying the means. The straight line is representative of unawareness. Just think about it. You respect the surroundings when you're aware of them. You move around them. You curve. You meander. You enjoy. You're enjoying the moment. When you travel in a straight line, you drill through. A straight line is basically a kind of rape. It's a complete disregard for your surroundings, your environment. You plow right through. You drill with complete unawareness. And what's ironic is we think of humans as the most conscious creatures on earth. That's our ego talking. You drill down into the ground. You drill through mountains. You drill. Isn't consciousness being aware of our surroundings? Isn't it actually empathy? It's moving around, making a path for others. It's regard for our neighbors. Isn't that what consciousness is? So why do we think that we're conscious when all we're doing is getting from point A to point B with disregard for our surroundings? We're asleep. We're not conscious. The irony is that the more we think we're conscious, the less conscious we are. And our straight lines are the evidence of that. What's interesting is that in Chinese folklore, which is rooted in Taoism, there's a common saying that evil spirits travel along straight lines. Therefore, in traditional Asian architecture and planning, paths are meandering and the roofs of buildings are curved. You'll notice as China becomes more and more commercialized, everything's straight and rigid and harsh. And with straight and rigid and harsh comes total lack of awareness of surroundings, which is why environmental destruction is the path of monetary civilization as we know it. We see that here in the States. We see this all over the world. In fact, the straight line grid began at the same time monetary civilization arose thousands of years ago. Just look at any ancient city any ancient commercial system, and you see the beginnings of grids and straight lines as the rule rather than the exception. And as we go farther and farther along up to the present, we see that straight lines are more and more and more the rule rather than the exception. We're becoming straighter and straighter as we go because we believe this is the most efficient path and actually it is the least efficient. We have more waste now than ever before in history. Waste is the path of the straight line. Waste and environmental destruction and disregard for our neighbors. Go to any straight line grid neighborhood, and you can bet nowadays most people don't even know who their neighbors are. The straight line is based upon disregard for your neighbor. And it's based upon lack of awareness, lack of consciousness. A couple of weeks ago, I was reading about the Kung Bushmen. I love reading about non-monetary peoples, people that rely on gift economy. There are very few true hunter-gatherers left in the world, and the Kalahari Kung Bushmen aren't so true hunter-gatherers anymore, but it's interesting. They've been so well-studied by anthropologists And it's interesting watching the transformation of many tribes from gift economy to monetary civilization. And let me read you some excerpts from this article by the anthropologist John E. Yellen from the Scientific American of April 1990. It's called The Transformation of the Kalahari Kung, 
why after centuries of stability has this society, an apparent relic of ancient hunting and gathering groups, abandoned many of its traditional ways. So Yellen says, the camp arrangement remained close and intimate until the early 1970s. Then suddenly the distance between huts increased significantly at the same time The circular pattern yielded to linear and other arrangements that gave families more privacy. The changes occurred so abruptly that the pattern of camp design can be said to have been unambiguously transformed from close to distant within a few years. By implication, such changes in camp design indicate that major changes in social norms for openness and sharing occurred as well in the early to middle 1970s. The conclusion is consistent with other evidence. In 1976, Diane E. Gelbert, then a graduate student at George Washington University, inventoried the material possessions of individuals at at Adobe and compared her data with a survey Lee had conducted in 1963. Whereas Lee found that most people could carry all their worldly belongings with ease, Gelbert found a dramatically different situation. Many times the items far exceeded the needs of an individual family and could best be viewed as a form of savings or investment. In other words, the Kung were behaving in ways that were clearly antithetical to the traditional sharing system. Yet the people still spoke of the need to share and were embarrassed to open their trunks for Gelbert. Soon they started hoarding instead of depending on others to give them gifts, and they retreated from the past interdependence. At the same time, perhaps in part because they were ashamed of not sharing, they sought privacy. Where once social norms called for intimacy, now there was a disjunction between word and action. This is the pattern, and we can see it. It's quite obvious how we as humans transform from circular, whole, community-oriented environments to linear, distance, and privacy. Privacy is kind of a new thing, like this need for privacy. The need for privacy comes from a kind of shame, which is what we see among the Kalahari Bushmen. Why is it that the wealthier people are, the more private they are about their bank accounts? I once did a survey back in my money days. I had a summer job doing a survey for the city, and we had to ask people what their income level was so that there could be benefits according to neighborhood. The poorer people were totally open about it. The rich people were like infuriated. I had the door slammed in my face so many times because they felt it was an invasion of privacy. The straight line grid is actually antithetical to natural selection and it's antithetical to efficiency. The straight line is a resistance to natural selection. The straight line grid, straight line mentality is contrary to evolution. Computers, we think of computers as being efficient because they do things fast. We think that fast means efficient. Computers are wired in a straight line grid. Our brains, on the other hand, are wired in a curved line lattice system. This is why brains, whether human or animal, are the most efficient processing system. We think computers are more efficient. But notice how a brain has awareness. It's supposed to have awareness. The brain, its very nature is to be aware of its environment, and that includes empathy also. Does awareness really exist in a computer? This is why it's called artificial intelligence. It's not intelligent. It's it's an imitation of intelligence. True intelligence has awareness. True intelligence selects for the curvy line. True intelligence selects for efficiency. Quickness is not necessarily efficiency. The more aware we become, the more we select for beauty, for curved lines, and we'll allow the occasional straight line. It's something interesting that's put into our works of art, but more and more civilization as we know it is selecting more and more against beauty, against the meandering path, against natural selection. And efficiency can never happen in a civilization where its very premise is working for an end reward, which, incidentally, is money. Maybe one day we will learn to select for intelligence, beauty, art, empathy, the meandering path. 
this can never happen in a civil civilization that's based upon working for an end reward, solely an end reward. This can never happen in a civilization that is based upon money. We think our straight line grids are more efficient, but they are artifices, artificial. They are artificial intelligence. They're artificial, they're fake, they're not conscious. If this sparks your interest to go deeper, I would recommend you watch my TED Talk from 2018. I talk about linear and cyclical thinking and how it relates to money and religion also. Also, there are other links below. There's a link to my website with frequently asked questions about the practicalities of living without money. There are also essays in my website that I wrote about gift economy.